brawl, but we've got one more match to end up the day, and it's going to be Shaxi versus uh, Flurry. And this one again, Shaxi bringing a cool lineup as he's no kind of known to do yeah. uh, across both seasons of GM. He definitely puts his own spin on it. He has the Quest Paladin, which we've, which we've discussed a lot, which is a tick for me. He has an Agro Warrior. He has the Quest Druid, and then he has the Quest Shaman. So for me, it's the most questionable lineup all weekend in terms of just what I think about these decks in isolation. Was, but if anyone can make it work, he can. Was that a hilarious questionable pun because he's got three quest decks? I'm going to say yes. yes. Believe me. <laughs> uh, uh, whereas Flurry is bringing the uh, Bomb Warrior, which is a much more... Um, again, it's playing that Plague, but it's more consistent. Like There's Double Malik in that list. Yep. Uh, he's playing Highlander Hunter, which I think is general agreed by at least today to be not that great over the course of this weekend. It hasn't been performing badly. We just haven't seen it because no and one's no one really playing wants this to play deck, it, which yeah. means it's probably not the best one. And then there is the Quest Druid, and then there is the uh, the Aggro Robe, which I know you're a big fan. Yes, last week I was a very big fan. And I think it still has a good spot in the metagame. If you can beat the Druids consistently, then I think you're in an all right spot. But I am honestly not convinced that it can beat the Druids quite so consistently. Okay, well, we are going to find out because I believe Druid versus Rogue is going to be the first matchup. Shaxi is going to be shielding his Paladin. Very relevant, Paladin having Divine Shield and have his Warrior banned out. Whereas Flurry shields his Rogue, interestingly enough, and has also has his Warrior banned out. So, regardless of what we have to say about anything before the oh. game starts, I'm going to give both these players a high five for double banning Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Already. They're 1-0 in my book, Derek. <laughs> Even though it's Aggro Warrior for Shaxi, I, yeah, yeah. I, I still appreciate it. I've seen enough. Exactly. I'm done for the day. It's Let's see some funny decks. And I think for Flurry here, it's a very interesting ban. And I w uh, sorry, an interesting shield. And I would say he probably got the better of his opponent because I think he would have predicted Shaxi to shield that quest paladin, given how nicely it does against the quest uh, druid in particular. And I would imagine probably decently well against the uh, Reno Highlander Hunter as well. And so he's saying, you know what, I'm going to line up with the one good deck I have against the quest paladin to shield it and make sure I get to play that and first. We've seen other uh, quest paladin players actually ban away rogue yep. and leave everything else up because it's like the one high aggro deck. There's there's aggro decks, but then there's face decks, and rogue definitely slots into that face deck probably um, along with one as well. So um, we'll see how it plans out. It's going to be very interesting because it is really just the clash of styles. Flurry outside of bomb warrior, but you know that's close enough. He's playing more standard lineup with a standard strategy. Yeah. Shaxi has just gone. Let's roll as you know the, the protection quest paladin. Bring an aggro warrior. Bring a quest shaman. There really is only druid that I would say is standard. Yeah. I'll call it right now. You may be somewhat confused by Flurry's mulligan, seeing two Hench Clan thugs and a Zephyrus the Great. Make no mistake, this is not Highlander Rogue, this is full on aggro rogue. The reason you're including Zephyrus is for Myra's unstable element. After you draw the whole deck, Zephyrus at that point is a fantastic way to just get that little bit of extra damage to push for lethal. The way the, the rest of his hand works, though, is kind of interesting, actually. We could see, you know, dagger on two, thug into thug would not be bad. We could see Coin Scimitar into Thug and then Swing. And with the pickup of Dread Corsair now, this is one heck of a heavy minion start. And Shaxi, as you may have remembered from past Druid games such as everyone today, pretty much passes one to turn five. It's not as strict as a pass, but because everything they do is so slow, Wrath pickup, fantastic. Mm. Um, it means that any deck that plays aggressively has, it, it's, it's like your opponent has to wade through tar, you know, in, in this game, right? Like everything they do is slow and clumsy yeah. compared to what you used to. So you, you, you're just stronger against this kind of deck than normal. It's great. Very interesting as to how Flurry partitions this out because he has a lot of different ways he could play this out. We could see him keep the Dread Corsair in oh. hand to go Dread Corsair Ed in the next turn. And what? But by playing it out here allows him to go Henchman Thug Swing next turn. Also, it potentially like baits the Wrath that we can see is there, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Because you can't not Wrath. You, just, you yes. have to Wrath one two, And then you almost certainly have to swipe. Yeah, now that he's got the enemy, that feels a lot more tedious. Yeah, Shaxi's actually got maybe one of the best anti-aggro opening hands I've ever seen. Because he had the, yes. the Explore on two into Wrath. 
into no. swipe with innovate is like actually it's only the sickest opening. Wow, picking up the ooze just in time. And this actually is <laughs> kind of an interesting way for this to play out because I was going to say that for Flurry, I wasn't sure if I liked the swing on the turn he equipped the Scimitar because I wanted to set up for double buff on the Hench Clan Burglar, or the Hench Clan Thug, sorry. Because Shaxi is running a copy of Ooze in his Druid, though, I guess I can understand why he'd want to get at least one of those swings. And, and remember, the amount of times we've seen these aggro rogues with like three weapons in hand yeah, is I, you are quite still likely to draw a weapon soon. I think if there was an Ooze in the deck, I would definitely prefer to keep it there because okay. he would have been able to get through the swings. There's only three weapons in the deck. It's not that likely he draws one. Uh, but with the Ooze in there, on average, yeah. I agree. You don't want to be blown out, do you? For sure. And now probably the first, I'd say, tough turn, Shaxi. Because the Ooze can test Ooze the 3-3. Three, three, yeah. It would be horrendous if he plays so, it. And he can't Starfall realistically. No. If he Starfalls, he'd have to like nourish for Crystal next turn. Slow. I think on balance, this is probably just the best way to go. Because Ooze, you don't even know that it's going to be that good. Like The chances of your opponent having a backstab, or at the very least, some way of easily dealing with it are pretty high, I think. Damage coming in big. Leroy, backstab, backstab, go. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh, I'm looking more heavily at the self-backstab here on the, and then miscreant, I guess. Hmm. I don't know. Everything feels terrible. So you just have to pretend there's no Oasis Surge. Uh, no hidden Oasis here, I think, is your game plan at the moment. Oh, Titanic is bad. Witchy Lucky is the nuts here. Yeah, That's you basically exactly. negates the backstab. Yeah. Ugh, that is not the nuts, though. Yeah, that's not very good. It's still a lot what, what about Titanic? Still dies to Starfall there, which is the problem. And it still would trade evenly into an Oasis Surge minion. It would die though, right? Was the question. Uh, sorry, not an Oasis Surge, a uh, Hidden Oasis. Oh, okay, okay. Six, six sorry, sorry, sorry yeah, I missed I'm with you. Because uh, Hidden Oasis, I think, on this turn is a very reasonable play to expect. So I like somewhat playing around it here, uh, even though. If he does see it, it's probably this just lights out. No. Uh, yes, this turn Nourish, is insane. This turn is wrath. Ha -ha. You leave a 1-6, one, a 1-1, one, one, and a 1-1 one, one on the board. You've drawn four cards and gained two mana ramp. Oh. That's why you play Drew, guys. <laughs> I guess the one thing he's considering is if I don't find any healing cards soon, that's another three damage I'm taking this turn, whereas Starfall obviously takes three damage off the board. But I think that's a terrible consideration. Uh, sorry, an extra two damage off the board. What? I think I would still have liked to see Nourish and Wrath. Well, on well Nourish gets you to your healing cards you don't have yeah. yet, and so does Wrath. I agree. Like, There's even a chance he top decks a Nubus that You draw four cards? Yeah. I, I, I am shocked. I've, sure. I've said many times I consistently don't understand Shaxi's playstyle at all. He wins, so I can't really argue too much with him. But... Huh? That seemed Draw four, worse. kill the only threat on the board, and... Because uh, isn't he just doing the same turn next turn? Probably. Oh, I'm so confused, Darren. I am so confused right now. Was a hidden oasis. Oh, well, yep. all right, Shaxi. <laughs> if you're going to draw like that, then whatever. We're I, not friends I, I anymore. I don't think he actually goes for it, though, this turn. Like, I think he can quite happily... It's more that, that he has it. Yes, yeah, because he, if, if there's any way he could die, then he would, I guess, go for it. But I honestly think as long as he removes the Leroy, there's no way he could die. Yeah, I like holding on. I made the play like eventually. But wasn't it better <laughs> the turn before, before yeah. surely? I think right? so. I mean, the benefit is clear that he managed to clear off two more damage. 
But I think the extra two mana he has next turn, the extra draw, is definitely worth it. And now Shaxi just have to, has to fend off one final push. There is a sap in the deck from Flurry. There is a chance. Does that mean Staff will innovate Hidden Oasis though? Probably not. I actually didn't see the innovate. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Oh, do you? I mean, do you even go for that? You've got. Uh, he's got ooze. Pharos, let's go. <laughs> I see you like to live dangerously. I, I'm just. I'm still just in shock. Hmm. I thought that turn was sick. Could just go for wrath. Yeah, he's going for the wrath here to take out the one minion that's bad to be bounced. Who's could potentially yeah. basically heal for 10 yeah. at this point, which is crazy. Bad outcome there, which means Ooh. that if we were to see a card like Myra's Unstable Element off the top, this is Flurry's only chance to pull himself back into the game. And got Derek, it. I don't know if Sol and Admirable are awake here. Did you hear the conversation about like? <laughs> they were talking about the because if you see a card like Myra's. Sorry, exactly, I did Myra's. <laughs> it was just funny. I just no, no, no. That's a good correction. <laughs> that that is, yeah, that is me being a hopeless millennial and saying like every three seconds. Myra's unstable <laughs> element was literally the only there card that Flurry could draw to pull himself back into the game. And what a card it is! It turns unwinnable situations into a minimum a chance. And if you tell me there's I'd a chance, I'd say he's got more than a chance no, no, right that's now. That's what I mean. A minimum I'm yeah. a chance. If you tell me there's a chance, I'll take it. Yeah. And now, maybe not for this turn directly, but there is a sap, there's backstab, there's plenty of damage, there's certain levels of heal, there's the eviscerate, there's what? also what we can't see yet, a generous mummy in, <laughs> uh, in the form of a pharaoh cat. Well, one thing I actually didn't like was his decision to go dagger, then corsair, then Myra's. Whereas if he'd just gone Myra's off the top and drawn sap, that would have been insane. Like, the extra three mana. One, and not had the Corsair down. Yes, and he, he, well, he gets to sap the 6-6 six, six and connect six face with Edward. Right. Uh, like, but he, he only plays one sap in the deck. So it was drawing the, the nine draw, cards. The draw would have had to been... He would have drawn over half his deck. Just over half his deck, right? So you take, would you take that? Honestly, I'm not even saying Probably. no. I'm just asking you, like, would Probably, you take that? yeah. Because if there was two in the deck... Oh, I'd take that every day. Yeah, but maybe not. I mean, he could, he could also have got a Vis plus deck hand. Oh, no, wait, he didn't have a weapon, so that wouldn't have worked. Right. Uh, I think this was all around safer, and remember, he... he but the upside's in, so big if you hit it. In playing the uh, the Corsair, he drew 10 cards, right? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know he gets well. an extra card, which so. is the benefit. Otherwise, you'd do it I'm my way. Every single one. Right. Ooh, wow. Yeah, and it does seem like this is going to be slipping away. There's just no answer, right? Flurry, yeah, he just can't survive against this. Why do we do this? They knew this day would come. Yeah, this is where Rogue is supposed to struggle. This nice wide board here from Jaxi. Flurry can sap something. What's crazy? And try though. and clear up with SIs. No Zephyrus. That's true. He did Zephyrus. Miss the Zephyrus would have been there. Uh, yeah, oh. Zephyrus brawl, Zephyrus twisting there. That's a, that's an excellent point, actually. Like, imagine Zephyrus comes down now. It couldn't twist in because it's turn nine, yeah. so it's probably a little bit too fast. Zephyrus but step. in general, like, Zephyrus Brawl, you know, whatever. Um, the game does continue. Yeah, I'm not saying it, it would, Flurry would win, but the game definitely continues. For one mana, there's nothing that Zephyrus can get to answer a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, no, the best is Soulfire, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For four. Yeah. Shadow of Death for three. Okay, so you utilize the sap to get rid of one of the taunts, the Daggerstone gets rid of another, and then there are minions, there are lackeys that can be me, can be generated. Ah! And that's gonna remove some stuff as well. Ah, this guy's oh, it's gonna You know what? For a dire situation, what do we make? Hey! hey! <laughs> I told you it was the the hidden generous mummy. Um <laughs> But for quite a dire situation, Flurry just made a fantastic turn. Yeah. And I think a turn like that, as I would say fairly quickly and confidently, shows that, yes, Flurry got his name from the card, Blade Flurry. 
and <laughs> he likes rogue a Some lot. Rogue. So True. you know he, he can he can unlock these rogue turns yeah. I think quicker than your average player, even your average pro, even the average bear. I think, however, despite his namesake, he made this match. Life Drinker step. Life Drinker is six damage. Eleven eviscerate. Maybe Misery can get it there. Evolve into Lucky Corcron. Lucky the three three. Step the Lucky. Lucky the three three again. Eviscerate hit face is nine damage. Aha, uh -huh, it's just not quite there. Would well, evolve Cogrun does nothing, right? I don't think so, because he just doesn't have the mana. It doesn't add up, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, if he could go Witchy Lackey into Corkron, step the Witchy Lackey into Leroy, and then Evis, I guess that's technically an hour. Because you can attack and then re evolve it. So there was a uh, out, it just wasn't a likely out, to say the least. It's <laughs> right, so not going to be it. Shaxi takes the game over Flurry, and that was a spicy one, yeah, that as far as I'm concerned. And the Myras gave Flurry, I think, as I said, a minimum a chance, but realistically, slightly more of a chance. He actually yeah, got yeah. so close, and, and the refill from Shaxi, of course, as Druid can do, is very, very powerful indeed. And that's really, Druid just gets that not quite late game, not quite early game, but just the mid towards the late is just so powerful for the Druid. And Shaxi really pushed that home. So he's going 1-0 versus Flurry. We're going to go to a quick break and come back to continue and finish this series. They've ever been Hearthstone Esports is home to many competitive formats, each with their own unique variants and rules. Today, we're going to break down one of them, the Shield Phase Conquest format. And here's how it works. To start, both players bring four decks, each from a unique class. The match starts with a Shield Phase. This is where both players choose one of their own decks to protect, making it ineligible to be banned. Once the Protect Phase has ended, both players will then ban one of their opponent's decks, removing it from the pool. Each player then selects which of their remaining decks they would like to play first before beginning the first game of the series. When the first game of the series is over, the winner's deck is removed from their pool of eligible decks. Both players then select the next deck they would like to play. The loser of the first game can choose to replay with the deck they lost with, or they can choose one of their other two available decks. In best of three conquests, the first player to two wins is the victor. In best of five series, such as those in the semifinals or finals of major events, the first player that makes it to three wins takes the W. It's that easy. Shield phase conquest allows players to showcase their skill set across different classes while still giving them the opportunity to play the deck they're most confident with. Now that you've got the download on shield phase conquest, we wish you well on your deck building adventures.
We are back and ready to go with Shaxi versus Flurry. Shaman versus Rogue, I believe, is coming up. And this is just going to continue to interest me because I've talked a lot and maybe complained a lot about Shaman. I'm not really liking any of the builds that's mm. going on. And uh, is he going to be good enough to take down Aggro Rogue? I don't know, is my, is my answer. Yeah, me know. neither. I think it could be an interesting matchup, especially against the Aggro Rogue, because it's not like the Shaman is defense, uh, defenseless in any of the metrics that you need to be against Aggro Rogue. It's got healing in the form of Life Drinker. It's got board control in the form of, obviously, all its many strong battle cry things, all the lackeys that can throw down as well. But I just wonder if it can come together quickly and cohesively enough. Right. Uh, it's even got the Acidic Swamp Boos, uh, in order to fight back against the Rogue. Because as soon as it gets a strong start, this Rogue ramps up the damage incredibly quickly. It does, and I think for me, it's very much regarding the list. Just it's e It'll be easy for Shaxi not to get to the tools he needs. Um, for example, you know, Weaponized Wasp, it takes so long to get on. He's kept it. Wow. Might maybe even to play it on curve as a three mana three three. That sounds because horrible. You, you cannot keep Wasp if you have no lackeys, I don't <laughs> think. And he doesn't have lackeys, right? I don't like the keep Wasp and, at all. And honestly, I think he just wants stuff to play because the issue is he could draw, he could have mulliganed into some worse cards than a three mana three three in this matchup. Yeah. Which I think might be his fear. But not much worse. Like, I'm pretty sure Weaponized Wasp is one of the lowest win rate mulligan cards in the deck. Um, and no, I would much prefer to have seen him look for uh, Questing I, Explorer. I think that might be because people are the trying, totem. the people who get it in their mulligan are trying to keep it for lack of stuff. Maybe. I, I just think there's quite consistently, because if you look at it, it's a very low curving deck, but the vast majority is two mana or three mana. And so I think mulliganing it away for, to look for, again, like you said, those lackey cards is a very reasonable way to approach the matchup. Okay, well, let's see how it goes anyway. The uh, Dudus are uh, actually doing pretty well in Shaxi's hand with the Elementals. There's a character in Fire Emblem called Dudu, and I got <laughs> confused <laughs> for a second. You're like, wait a second, what's Dudu doing here? <laughs> Sounds like you're saying, what's Dudu doing what's here? What's Dudu doing here? <laughs> yeah, the Elementals getting the job done, but they're, they're already spent now. You know, the, yeah. those are two anti aggro tools, pretty good. Uh, or reasonable levels of very waves. Yeah. Um, it's just gone. They're, they're already gone, and, and yep. Flurry's still doing stuff, and Flurry has Myros. So he is not like... going to slow down doing <laughs> stuff. Yeah, he is going to keep... The stuff ain't going to stop coming. I'm trying to think of how many punishes there are to go and face here, and I think it's actually very limited. Uh, Mogu Flesh Shaper is... I, I need to keep calling it Mogu instead of saying, like, Pogu. Uh, <laughs> Mogu Flesh Shaper is not able to come down for a value trade quite yet. Um, and, you know, it'd have to be a specific lackey off a lackey card that doesn't even seem to exist yet. So I like the push of extra two to face. Me too. I guess the punish is Bog Slosher? Uh, I suppose, but then you get another two face next turn. Yeah, which, yeah, which yeah. I, I mean, just like that's the a, a two mana that. four four deal one to four, you can say. Well, um, as our uh, friendly plumber would say, let's a go. Let's a go. <laughs> <laughs> because like, what else is he doing this turn? <laughs> For a second there, I think you know. As a friendly plumber would say, sorry, man, I'm going to have to come back tomorrow and get some parts. It's going to cost <laughs> you 50 quid at least. I could see how you could get mixed up. <laughs> yeah, I think the question is whether he's backstabbing first or not. Oh, you always get rid of the backstab there. I like it a lot. I'd rather have an extra card of backstab. Game on. Whoa. Second weapon, oh, actually. Well, cards. weapons are hoys, actually, pretty sick. This is really poor, though, overall, right? No Zephyrus, no Leroy. Oh, like, I see. It's the power. Yeah, there's a lot of damage. <laughs> there's a lot of, and, lot of and, damage. And if he can't find ooze, this is uh, like this is looking good for fun. Very good. But of course, there are very strong cards that Shaxi could find soon. A giggling inventor coined out next turn. How do you ever get through that? Also, nice wasp, buddy. <laughs> hey, it fills out his curve. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> All Best card in the, the deck. <laughs> Is honestly Coin Life Drinker mutate that bad? Um, no. Like, I'm just thinking, uh, if you get a 5 drop and you get to heal, like. Yeah. Speaking of heal? Uh, 
Bad job. Bad game. <laughs> what? <laughs> because it needs to be kept at full health to be good. Speaking of plumbers, uh, Flurry can go for Evil Miscreant here. <laughs> exactly. That's what we tried to say, say all along. <laughs> I have not slept in a <laughs> so many options. <sighs> what about just sapping the light warden and playing the scimitar? Or I, I guess the waggle pick for, for mana efficiency's sake. And then there's swing, life drinker, swing, bounce, life drinker. Yeah, I think I'll let them Because no one wants to play uh, light warden. And if you say you do, you're lying. Oh, do you really want a generous mummy in your hand, though? <laughs> Chloe. It's a question you've got to ask yourself. Oh, close. That's actually a good one. <laughs> it's a rebuff in you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> very nearly. They share similarities. Mummy. Yeah, I think this was. As long as Waggle Pick. Yeah, Ghost Face. Ghost like, Whatever yeah. you do, like, just get them. Waggle Pick and Deadly Poison. I think that was always happening this turn. Set up for the uh, Life Drinker next turn. And it does mean that Life Drinker and a, a double activation of Life Drinker and a swing is 12 damage next turn, which means Shaxi can get out of range, very importantly. For how long is the question? Excellent point. I think what? we're looking at this oh, turn, uh, but Life Drinker, but does Mogu, life drink and then If he's one away with double Life Drinker, then doesn't he just do this? Uh, oh, okay, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm here, to save you from your own idiocy. Cheers, buddy. Oh, no, he'd be, he'd be two away, right? I mean, I trusted your accounting, okay? I, I said he had 12, he was 14. I never said he was one. Yeah, I like this play, represents two turn lethal on the back. Oh! Swing and a miss! Somewhat appropriately, considering it's a bat. <laughs> it's finally happened. <laughs> I crashed Ravenbot. I wonder. Keep casting. I this does now focus. mean that Flurry with Life Drinker. Step it, life drinker, or you know, swing the waggle pick. Two damage off lethal. The eviscerate, one damage off lethal. I don't think there's any way you can get there. Like you can't activate the SI7 beforehand. It's all just a tiny so bit off. But he can obviously heal for six just at the stuff, same time. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he could just sap the light warden, right? That seems good too. Yep. You can sap the light uh, light warden, play life drinker, heal, bounce life drinker, and have it all for I next like the turn anyway. Oh man, Hyreek the Bat. If it was anything other than that, yeah, it would actually really be a problem. Yeah. Oh, would it? Because maybe anything you could just else. eviscerate a different minion, sap that big minion from Hyreek. Oh, I guess. Then, I, guess. Know, I think there's enough damage that he doesn't have to throw it all for face, right? He may as well replay, yeah, right? Well. Yeah, I, I guess he would have likely have survived. Yeah, he could sap Avis. Yeah, yeah. Avis the 3 3. Yeah, yeah. Which means Shaxi needs an answer right now to stay alive. And because he didn't oh. play the Questing Explorer last turn, he uh, cannot draw a card with it. So he's all in on the Cable Rat to save him, which means Ethereal Lackey exactly, I think. Or evolve into something that evolve heals Evolve uh, What nine drops heal you, though? Like eight drops, there's Living Fountain, but that doesn't even attack into yeah. anything. There's uh, a Deranged Doctor that can't die. So, would he want maybe. Like, he can't even have a taunt. Like, lifesteal doesn't work. He needs something that heals him at the end right of his now. turn. So, he needs to evolve the. He needs to play a lackey and evolve it into the. Uh, oh, is it at the start or the end of the healing fountain? Uh, the, um, That's at the start of your turn. It's the start, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Light <laughs> That's it, light <laughs> fountain, I, I can't think of anything that saves him here. Oh, I mean, I guess his best hope is to pray there's literally no other damage in hand. Right. And try and, and find try a get target. Target. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, of course, it would be a double activation, so he could go up to 10. Right oh, and there's a 10 mana 10 10 taunt. Right, but I mean, there's a bunch of taunts on 4 anyway. It doesn't matter how big the taunt is. 
And it does mean that there's nothing that can save it. Flurry gets the W. 1-1 one, one here for both players. Shaxi, if he was to end up losing despite his 1-0 start to this series, going down 1-3 would be in stark, stark contrast to how he was playing in Season 1. Obviously, finishing top of the leaderboard yep. in Division B, I believe, with a 10-4 record, I think he had at the it end, was, which was, was like insane. the yeah. best across all of Grandmasters. I, I feel like uh, we're just living in an upside-down world in Season 2, where the players that did the best are doing the worst, and yeah. vice versa, and so on. But we are going to be going into game number three between these two players, two that are very, very uh, strong players from last season. And I still don't know who, who, who I like here, because I like half of Shaxi's decks, and I dislike <laughs> the other half. Yeah. And then Flory's just bringing the standard, but that includes Hunter that no one wants to play for some reason. Yeah. Um, and the Druid's fine, of course, but the Rogue I do like, but then Warrior's just meh, because it's always going to hit a ban. Or, you know, yeah. Warrior Druid, you're only ever realistically playing one nine times out of ten. And I think when we look outside of the overall hypotheticals of this matchup and look down to what it's coming down to, now that the Rogue is out of the way, I'm liking the look at that Paladin from Shaxi. The Quest Paladin, now that it's got rid of the, uh, given that it's Conquest, the biggest counter to that has already yeah. taken a win. I think he could be in a pretty good spot to queue that up. Yeah, uh, one thing I don't want to see is the Shaman again, because I just don't think it's there. I think, funnily enough, the Rogue might have been one of his better matchups. And really? even then, I don't think it was good. Yeah, because at, at least at least some of the early game stuff you do, if you manage, if Rogue just has like one kind of bad draw, yep. you can just lock it down. And once you have board versus Rogue, it's difficult. Like as we saw then, like there was no way it was very uh, uh, Flurry was ever getting board back from like turn four or something. Yeah. Um, whereas without Myra's, Flurry probably just loses that game, right? Yeah. Uh, where, so I think it's not a good matchup, but it's better. But yeah, we, I think we are getting we're getting Paladin versus Hunter. And I think that's just a nod of saying how much Flurry does not want to play his Druid against Paladin. It's, it's just miserable. Time and time again, there's just yeah. no way to deal with it consistently. It seems all. like an absolutely horrible matchup. Uh, sorry, therefore I 100% agree with his pick of going for the uh, Highlander Hunter. I think there's a couple of things that could make this very nice, or at least reasonable for Flurry, is uh, one of which the secrets, which could wreck some havoc with the early game for Shaxi, or at the very least stop his offensive push, because if he's got a bunch uh, an 8-8 in play and he's afraid of freezing trap, maybe that slows him down enough to not go for an aggressive push. Uh, but mainly Zephyrus early on is really what I'm looking at to put Flurry in a great position here, because if he's able to get a timely silence, a shadow of death, something to steal one of his opposing big minions, Things could look very nice. And, and on the other side there, I actually think Ziliax is extremely important for Shaxi. Because if Flurry pushes early or gets all the board into the game, then the secrets, like Flurry could choose just to not attack and try and do damage to face. Yeah. You know, do, do the old hunter thing. But for now, let's get into the game. Shaxi has one, two, and three lined up. Yeah, it's a reasonable curve. It's, uh, it's no crystallogy. It will get the ball rolling for him. Well oh, that's big though. He has one of the big yeah, boys. He does. He, oh, he just needs to complete that quest though, which seems uh, not that close. Is it? Oh, oh okay. take it back. He's very close. I told his deck was sick, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Why not? The curve is, I guess, available for Secret Coin Hyena Alpha, but I've got to be honest, with Freezing Trap, that seems incredibly unlikely that it will work out for Flurry. Yeah, I agree. I think it's it's a real tough one because Shaxi does play weapons in the deck. Yeah. But at this point, should you just play the the uh, the ooze, or do you even just coin out Ursatron maybe? Because I feel like Flurry early game definitely wants to do stuff, and I think taking it slow is not the way to progress. <laughs> yeah. Go for the ooze, save the coin. I, I would I would have considered going for coin Ursatron. Uh, you know, without snip snap, it becomes a little bit. Less. Yeah, I mean, this is quest completion available for Shaxi, I think, in the next couple of turns. Christology, I believe, is guaranteed to get reborn minions. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, turn five, we'll be ready to go. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I said. Although it may be. Wasn't it? <laughs> oh, there's a weapon as well. Not bad to have a. It's actually a pretty good card to, to pick up. Yeah. Maybe it's worth equipping this turn. I think you want to kill off the Ursatron no matter what because Coin Ziliax could present a bit of a problem. Yeah, and, and the thing for me is until you hero power the whelp, when you do the quest right now does not matter. 
Like, all that matters is the quest needs to be done by the turn eight, basically, in this game. Yeah. Unless he draws an egg next turn, and then it's turn seven. Because that's there your power turns when you have their whelp or the egg into the hero power, then the game becomes you you edge towards that checkmate scenario. Yeah. Until then, as long as you do know you can get to the quest, it doesn't really matter when. It's like it's very mm. I think reminiscent of old Quest Rogue, where a lot of players quickly realize you need to spam it out super quick. Yeah. As long as you can get it done on the turn you need it, it's fine. I'm not actually sure if I uh, agree with this play here from Shaxi because he needs to be somewhat precious with his minions and uh, I guess actually it's a little bit unfortunate with how it worked out because the way the play he made of Christology this turn he had a pretty good chance of finding Mermy and right. a two cost minion in which case he would have been able to go Mermy two cost reborn and the hero power but this way it means he doesn't get the hero power any earlier than if he'd gone true silver last turn it's a bit unfortunate that it panned out this way because it means he's not going to have the hero power until turn six. Which I think is fine, though. Like, right, and I, so I, that's why I like the true silver. Yeah, exactly. And like, even now, he could just play true silver anyway, yeah. push, and then play three two drops the turn after, and then, you know, move so. towards everything of else. I think, right it's, I think it's fine, but Jaxi is just sticking with this board, isn't he? Oh, all right. <laughs> Quest Adventures. Good job. Not Quest Adventure. What am I talking about? Explorer. Yeah, Explorer. Everyone messes that up. It's literally impossible. It's just ingrained into my mind. Questing means it's uh, adventure. Yeah. And now, just already, you start to think, what is going on? There is a very strong play this turn, of course. Flurry going to go for the Snake Trap into the Hyenas. Uh, yeah. uh, but is it strong enough, my it answer? It doesn't feel like nope. it's strong enough. Like when you're falling this far, far behind in tempo, before the quest is even activated, what chance do you have after? In this instance, do we ever see Whelp this turn to prepare f uh, for quest completion next turn and then copy the Whelp that's on the board? I think it depends on what this trap is from Shaxi. Okay. I think you can always attack first and to find out, yeah. give at least some information. Because now Shaxi can decide whether he wants to commit to that because if it's Snake's Train Unleashed Deadly Shot, mm -hmm. your whole board can be cleaned up and there's a minus one whelp. Right? Yeah. Which is the scary part. That's true. You need to guarantee. I think just weapon into the Explorer is fine. Next turn, you can get the the mummies down. I think if he, I think if he's not playing well, I want to see him do the hero oh, power this turn. Quickly. Like questing explorer temple berserker hero power feels like a, a strong turn. I just feel like having the weapon, just being able to leverage it, like you get full swings because you've seen ooze. Yeah. Of course, it's the right way. Okay, he's gonna go for it. Oh, oh, that's gonna pick up two. Yeah, that's the, true. The lifesteal is yeah. just like any defensive. Kill me any, now, Hunter. <laughs> yeah, offensive push made by Flurry. Did he get the hero? He missed the hero power. Wait. Oh, Shaxi, Shaxi, Shaxi. Oh, we're seeing Mult this too much. Man. Yeah, the mu multiple players, and I yeah. believe across all regions, or at least yeah. a few regions, are not performing. And you know, Alutimu messed up earlier, yeah. start of the day. Shaxi messed up at the end of the day. I think it's, the, it's not good. The thing that's particularly egregious about this instance is that we can agree Welp, Weapon, and the play he was trying to make were all good. They were right, all, all probably game yeah, winning. Yeah. yeah, so just pick one. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much. It. Yeah. You, you play around mess ups like this by picking the Welp because you can't mess it up. Yeah, you, you, you play it and it's your mana. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it wasn't the best play, which I guess looking at the board today, it probably wasn't because it developed a lot less stuff. I don't know. It, it sets up for a strong play next turn. It's something like. This is basics, though, Derek. Like, yeah, this yeah. is what the frustration is. It's basics. It wasn't a mind-blowing turn, was it? It's just uh, anyway. The the Chaxi, although did mess up, is in such a good spot that I think he struggles to mess up the whole game. In my opinion, because now he can just drop the uh, the guardian hero power for minimum six healing. Are you not liking the consecration this turn? Does he need mm. to clear anything? With a 4 2 and a 2 2 lifesteal that Death Rattle are oh, reborn into them again. It's just Your scary to leave them so he plays for Zilliax. I guess that's not that bad. Your I think he very swiftly 
Chaxi just doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Like, look at what the decks can do versus Druid. Are you are you scared of one Zilliaxi boy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Imagine if he just misses all the attacks. Whoa! <laughs> What's going on? If that is the case, I would put myself forward for replacing Shaxi here. Because even I, I would often not say I could do better than a pro player. Wisely so. But if someone misses turns, I'll hold my hands up. I'll at least do the turn. You know what? I can click a button. <laughs> but now, else. again, if you were Flurry looking at this, how do you even you can get a plan how together? Do how do you even... It's just checkmate again. Yep. You can't kill all this life steal. And if you don't kill it, there's going to be more. If you do kill it, you're getting killed by everything else. If you kill everything, we can see, obviously, that there's power plays. And with all the cards that Flurry has seen, it, you, as Flurry, you only have to be a matter of time before you see an egg of some description. I'm counting the Whelper's neck as well. But you, you know what I mean? Because like, it's halfway through his deck, yeah. and he runs four cards that are insane. It looks like Flurry's just setting up for the strongest thing he can do this turn with Dynatama Bran. Bran smoke him quickly. Oh, he knows that never it works. It literally deals that two. It literally deals two. Works. It deals two damage. But it's not enough attacks. That's the problem with yeah. Reborn. Yeah, it's just not good. And the hero power. If this spirals out of control incredibly quickly. Yeah. It's a game. <laughs> it's, it's insane, isn't it? Is this a consecration turn? This looks a little bit more tempting. Uh, you can still just copy a Guardian, which is pretty nuts. <sighs> what about all face? <laughs> Let well, me you, you yeah. heal to full health, and you can play a Whelp and Hero Power. <laughs> Are you afraid of top deck Zilliax in that instance? Or, or Zephyrus, right? Because uh, I think for Flurry here, uh, for Shaxi here, sorry, it's just Zephyrus that he's afraid of. Because Zephyrus, Master Spell. Yes. Or I don't know Zephyrus Blizzard, like to freeze the board. Like if your board gets frozen, that's when things. Can but go it wouldn't well. freeze, right? Or Zephyrus Frostnova. Oh, sure. I, I don't even know if it would offer Frostnova. I don't know if Zephyrus is that small. You know, I think there are ways it could. Possibly work. But killing off fine. the King Crush, yeah, yeah. I, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Even if Zephyrus comes down, it's not that bad. Fifty-fifty. <laughs> it's one Mermy or one big Mech Dragon. It's just. You just can't win. It's just the yeah, deck's sorry. secretly insane. Pretty unwinnable. It may be less of a secret. I should have jammed way more of this deck before, <laughs> before people thought it was yeah, good. Yeah. And I think the the thing we've seen is again, it's a relatively small sample size. Every game we've seen, it's been relatively quick quest completion. I guess yeah. the the fear factor is just when you don't complete your quest quickly, right. which can happen. I think a reasonable percentage of the time. What do you think? Most minions. I'd say this is a quest. I'd say your this has been a overall of the deck. If we if we were to see it play your out another hundred games, okay. its win rate I, would lower. I, yeah, I am not saying this deck just beats every other deck. Of course, I you know I, I'm not saying that. But the deck, most minions are reborn. The ones that aren't are the ones you want for your hero power. And the other cards are Christology, which get like, you to the rest. Christology like, early on. Th there's a reason why that card makes the deck have a 65% win rate, or like higher, right? It's more where that came from, but they don't cost eight. I think Flurry's had the right mindset, though. Like, he knew that the aggressive base race was never, ever going it to never work. Was, yeah. So he tried his best to just exhaust the problem with resources. Uh, I don't think it's going to work. But I think it was his last check. <laughs> Valbrood Skitterer. Keeps okay. him alive. <laughs> <Don't agree. laughs> but it doesn't. But he's just going to throw it down. takes the series. And wow, wow, wow. What a weekend for Quest Pilot and Dara because we've, <laughs> we've, we've had a great weekend of Hearthstone with loads of cool decks, loads of yeah. cool games, loads of cool matches, but Quest Paladin has been overpoweringly impressive. It's not just, wow, this deck's good. It's like, this deck just 
cannot lose in yeah. many situations. It cannot lose as long as some people press the hero power, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, very impressive for Shaxi overall. He did mess up, uh, but I it was think, a one game. But I think again, Shaxi, I feel this week has been fortunate that Druid and Paladin are really good decks because I don't think his Shaman did well. Yeah. And I don't think his warrior is that good either. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of it, if Paladin was not the deck this week, Shaxi would be in trouble with this lineup overall. Yeah, I think so too. I'm, I'm wondering whose list that includes Quest Paladin I like the most. Maybe Staz, because he doesn't have, I think, the aggro warrior. Whereas a lot of the other players like uh, Blitzchung and Shaxi have the aggro warrior. I think warrior Frosty's was all right from what recall, because he played the, other sh the super greedy Shaman as well, so he just well, beats Frosty Control had Magic. Merlock Paladin, not Oh, uh, wait, Quest yeah, Paladin. yeah, of course, of course. It's so many Paladins. Yeah. It is, but let's take a look at today's results and see what has gone on. Uh, right at the beginning there, Alutimu uh, two, uh, lost to Glory 2-1. and one, And you have to ask the question, Alutimu pretty much threw away a game. Yeah. So that result could have looked differently. And then Patrick, in that game we talked about at the start of the day, both these players were 0 and 3. One of them was going to end the day 0 and 4. And that was Blitzstrom with Patra. Very happy to get the win there. Then surrender again, 2-0ing Tyler. You're saving himself that from, was from, from the lowest score possible available. Does still mean that players who have qualified through to BlizzCon are now 2-10 and 10 in records in Season 2, which is Good job, not great, but he's, <laughs> he's clawing them, way, uh, them back up out of the relegation zone. Uh, as we see there, Blood Trail taking a victory, getting himself up to a slightly better record. And Shaxi going up 2-2 two and two and bringing Flurry down also to 2-2. Two, two and two. So it seems like a lot of the players are getting closer to that middle yeah. part, which is going to make for a very interesting uh, scenario later on in the season when top four qualifies through to playoffs and that middle spot it's going to be well, let's sacked. take a look at those spots so we can see the standings because for me uh, th there are three points right there's obviously first place regardless of where you can argue what it's worth because yeah. you want to get that top four mainly but first place is first place you, you ain't arguing with that but there's the middle section say look at dawn and frosty simon Sam and shaxi there's a world of difference yeah. between those two spots it's a true. world of difference and then there's bottom place currently blood trail and blitz chunk which would be, if this was week seven, they would be gone. They would be out of Grandmasters for next season, and we would have two new Asian Pacific players come up in to join the other uh, players we see here. Division A is looking so exciting. I oh. love these ones where it's so close in the middle. Like, even first and second could end, uh, sorry, first and last could end up at the same score next week. They could both right. end up three and three and we could have all this squishing even closer towards the middle. Division B is kind of exciting in its own right, with obviously Tom trying to sail through to an uncontested uh, first place in a few weeks if he keeps on these winning uh, streaks going. And Blitzchunk, just as you said, trying to stay alive in the tournament. It's going to be getting pretty scary. Yeah, and then in the middle, there's still this, this scrap for, for just getting that top four. We've increased it from three to four players from each division actually make it into the final week of Grandmasters, which is the playoffs. Uh, and that's really, that's goal number one. And then finishing first place, obviously fantastic. Not finishing last place, pretty fantastic too. But that is goal number one, and we'll be keeping track of all these players and all these matches throughout every single week. So cool if you can hang out with us as well. But for Derek and myself, we are done for the day and for the week. Have a great week, and we'll see you next weekend.